Everyone may uh, be seated. This is my first year doing this inside, and I'm thankful and extremely appreciative of everyone that took the time to come out and join us in the celebration, so thank you. Um, I had the privilege of standing outside and hearing when our veterans walked in, people applauding. Unfortunately, the children did not hear that or even have the opportunity to thank the men and women not only the veterans that stand in front of us, but our officers and our firefighters that literally run in to a dangerous situation while we're all running away from it. So if we could just please take a second to thank our veterans and our servicemen. Thank you very much. And again, as a grateful nation calls to refresh the memory of her fallen sons and daughters, the veterans of the Republic comes once more to the river we call the roll of the mustard out and strew with wreaths and flowers their honored graves. Memorial Day calls upon a united nation to appropriately mark the last resting place of our sons and daughters who saw service while following the flag in time of war. Fellow citizens, comrades of any military organization, all comrades of the Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, or return comrades of the same, veterans of all wars, of all servicemen and women, town of Brookfield Police, firefighters, first responders, civil defense, emergency medical technicians, some of the sons of the American Legion and VFW, scouts, 4-H youths, recreation teams, students, and parade units are earnestly invited to join us in a proper observation of this day. If I could ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Now, if you could please, uh, your choice, stay standing. I would prefer if you stay standing for a prayer led by Pastor Condon. Please join me in this prayer. 
in the hands of God, the eternal Lord of the universe, rest the souls of all who have lived and died for the cause of liberty and justice. Grateful for their sacrifice and confident of their lasting contributions in God, we bow in remembrance of the fullness of their devotion. Through such unselfish enlistment and priceless sacrifice, we are brought into peace and security, rescue from tyranny and oppression. And we offer our prayers for men and women who have served and continue to serve our country loyally and for their families. We pray that we may dig into our pockets and open our hands for all veterans who suffer still the miseries of war, the wounded, the injured, the distraught, the disabled. Those harmed should ever be honored, those homeless never forgotten. And give to us each one courage and strength to save our land from greed and corruption. Bestow upon our leaders wisdom and our people patience that together we may achieve a better law, a purer life, a more abundant opportunity, a more certain respect for each and all. May the virtues and principles for which so many died summon us to the task for which we now must live. Amen. Now we are honored with the selection from the Quaybog Highlanders. Thank you. You may sit. We debated if we wanted to have you guys stand like us, but uh, I got outvoted. So um, this next section, it's, it, it absolutely amazes me. I don't even remember what I had for breakfast this morning, but somehow the children in this community remember the Gettysburg Address in Flanders Field, and, and they do it so well in front of a crowd of people, and it, just, it blows my mind. Uh, what I'd like to do is call all four children up now, applause for them. Welcome, guys. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, so first, the Gettysburg Address. Uh, we have Hayden McLaughlin.
Confederate Address, Abraham Lincoln, November 19, 1863, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggle here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note, no longer remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us. That from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. And that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. Excellent job. Now a selection from Dan's marching band. in Flanders Fields from Tama, Cologne. Flanders Fields by Lieutenant Colonial John McCray, Medical Doctor, Canadian Army, 1915. In Flanders Fields the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the lark still bravely singing fly scarce heard amid the guns below. 
We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in these fields. Take up a quarrel with the foe, to you from flailing hands we throw. The torch, be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us to die. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. And now a selection from the Quaybog Highlanders. Now for a gentleman that's been chomping at the pick. <laughs> Gettysburg Address, Michael Tambury. Gettysburg Address, Abraham Lincoln, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, November 19, 1863. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent, a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on great battlefields of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fair and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead as we stole here, have consecrated far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note no longer remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is rather for us to be here. Okay. It is for us to live and rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remain before us. That from these our day we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we hear how they saw that these that shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. I love it. 
Love it, love it. See why it's my favorite part of the whole program? Uh, now another selection from Jan's marching band. Mr. James Cooper, who will be reciting from Landers Field. Flanders Field by Lieutenant Colonial John McCrae, Canadian Army Medical Doctor, May 1915. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. 
And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. Oh, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. We are, take up the quarrel with the foe. To you, the torch, um, from failing hands we throw. If ye break faith with us who die, um, uh, we shall not. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Round of applause for all of them. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, mothers and fathers out there. Each year just amazes me, the children. Uh, selection from the Quaybog Highlanders. Memorial Day. It's uh, to me, at least, it's a roller coaster. Love roller coasters. I get really emotional on days like today. Uh, with roller coasters, we have a good time with our children, celebrating them, and we celebrate today. Coming from that, uh, we go into the remembrance of the men and women that not only gave their lives for this great country and for allowing us the things that we do each and every day, but the men and women that served that gave of themselves the potential to give everything for this country. Uh, Brookfield has lost far too many this year. Every year we do a memorial for that. Um, I'm really torn up as well. A little less than a week ago, brothers of our uh, men and women in uniform, Officer Tarantino gave his life last week, a little after midnight, where um, we all critique officers where he's not sitting in an empty parking lot or back at the station doing paperwork. He's out there patrolling our streets and making us safe. Less than about two towns over. And he paid that ultimate sacrifice of his life 
for us to enjoy days like today and every day. Our sons and daughters of Brookfield, in memoriam, William Latino, Army, Vietnam, Albert Beauregard, Army, Korea, Talis Neal, Jr., Air Force, Vietnam, Roger Charpentier, Navy, Vietnam, Peter Limo, Army, Vietnam, Robert Wilder, Marine Corps, Korea, Frank Kinney, Navy, Korea, William Troy, Jr., Air Force, Korea, Albert Kazuki, Kazusi, Army, World War II, Roger Bacon, Army, World War II, Ronald Daxon, Air Force, Korea. I said we want to observe a moment of silence for our men and women, our brothers and sisters of the town of Brookfield. Thank you, everyone.
Before we conclude, uh, conclude this morning, uh, it's a brief ceremony. You know that both of the uh, cemetery and the common ceremonies into one. Um, to take a couple minutes to look around and see what this town is made of, see what this country is made of. Boys and girls in this room, the men and women in this room, make Brookfield what it is, make this country what it is. Uh, the, uh, we're going to be having uh, donuts downstairs. There's going to be some pumpkin kits downstairs from AgCom as well. If you don't have the stories to tell your children from their grandmothers, their grandfathers, their fathers, their mothers, go downstairs and talk to these men and women about the true service that they gave to this country. Like I do with my son, for his, both of his grandfathers. Both of his grandfathers served, and his great-grandfather, my grandfather, gave his life for this country on the last day of the Korean War. Absolutely proud of this country. I'm absolutely proud of Brookfield. And absolutely proud and amazed of the men and women that do everything for this town of Brookfield, including yourselves. God bless Brookfield. God bless America. Thank you again.